Hi, I've only got 10 minutes, so I'm going to absolutely fly through this. Most of the, this is based on an excellent presentation from Donald Clark on videos, what the research says, but I put in some slides of my own as well. Uh, generally, I follow the principle of keeping it simple, the Pareto principle, just 20% of your effort will get 80% of your impact. So keep it simple and don't overdo it. I've also been highly inspired in video by Salman Khan, seeing what powerful, simple videos can do that don't require great production values. Uh, also, this uh, person, a lot of you will know, Eugene Lachlan, who has great videos on YouTube and a huge following, all very simple. Some of them just are PowerPoint presentations. Some are demonstrations of techniques in, uh, in um, uh, Excel, and others are just camera on paper. Very simple capture videos. So video is cheap and easy to use. It's easy to buy the cheap to buy the equipment and you don't need a lot. Really all the most important piece of equipment is a good microphone. You don't really need a headshot. Research shows that it's not particularly needed, but have it if you want it. You need some screen capture software. If this is the type of video you want. Um, uh, a visualizer, if you're working on paper, it's probably best to work through a computer, capture the screen and use a visualizer to get what you're writing on paper onto the screen. If you're editing, there's software, fairly cheap software available for editing it. Uh, if you wanted a quick approach to reduce your workload, a lean pro approach, prepare well, use good PowerPoint technique and more on that in a minute. Uh, what you want to do is not be editing afterwards, minimize post-production. So in order to do that, you need to prepare well and tolerate errors. There are certain tricks you can do. If you make a mistake, just leave a little gap and then just go back to where you want to start from and you'll spot that on the audio so it's easy to do. Good PowerPoint practice. There's a, an image of a terrible PowerPoint slide. Uh, I've seen people with PhDs in education show slides like this, less is more. Okay, just use words and phrases. Use images to illustrate the point. And if you get one point over per slide, you'll be doing well. Often if you get one point per presentation, you're doing well. Okay, the bullet points can act as prompts like I'm using them now and use the animation because that draws attention to the latest bit on the screen, stops people reading ahead. And you can use animation in diagrammatic form like this wipe type animation, which shows the direction of flow. Okay, now the research, how long uh, do learners engage? They say it's around six minutes. Really should be keeping your videos uh, six minutes or shorter if you can. Allow them control. The very fact that you can pause and rewind, change the speed, those are great control. But if you have chapter control in the DLL, that's valuable too. There's the idea of cognitive overload. You want to eliminate that. So take a minimal approach, get rid of background music, don't use complex backgrounds. White is absolutely fine. I'm using white here, even though I'm using images on top of them. Do you need a headshot at all? You probably don't. Maybe even put your photograph on the first slide, or maybe if you want to do some editing, just speak with a camera on the first slide and then get rid of that camera. Uh, uh, on speech, I'm speaking informally now, not from a script. That seems to be the best way to do it. And enthusiastically, I hope I've been enthusiastic enough. Don't use an actor. Be the expert on it. Um, uh, speaking 185, 254 words a minute. I really don't know where, what I do on that. But what I find is that if I listen back to my own videos, that if I speed them up to about 1.5, uh, I sound a lot better. But in actual fact, they, some research has shown that uh, students replaying video of up to 1.7, there's no damage to their learning. Probably we speak a little bit slow. Videos of what you're doing, do it from your first person perspective rather than the third person perspective if you can organize that. What about image size? Unfortunately, watching on a phone is not the most effective. Large screen is better than small screen. So it is better to have students on large screens. What about cuts in the video? Cuts do raise attention but too many cuts. So be considered about how you do that. Chunk your video, leave visual rests. That helps people to just stop and think about what you're talking about. What about at the end of video? It is a good thing to summarize, to make them think about what the video has been about, as some sort of a summary. 
what to do after the video, it is important to get them to do things after the video uh, to sort of uh, reinforce what's just being in the video. But it has to be closely related. Things like drawing diagrams, explaining what you see, these type of things can be useful. But also quizzes. Uh, but the best quizzes, now you can use multiple choice quizzes and that can be very useful. I find multiple choice quizzes are best because it forces people to take some notes and concentrate during the video if they know there's multiple choice quiz at the end. But multiple choice where the answers are actually there are not the best for learning. Re for retrieval, filling in the blank is better because they have to really get into their memory to get that out. Okay. That's more or less it. Uh, I want to give a, um, a little bit of plug to Donald Clark's company, Wildfire. Very clever product or service they have where they take uh, YouTube videos, text, whatever, analyze the transcript, uh, generate um, open answer questions, use artificial intelligence to generate the questions and artificial intelligence to analyze the answers and use um, spaced practice, which has been shown to improve memory. Very clever. Another thing that should be mentioned is YouTube is the most significant learning platform on the planet. And you don't have to make videos, you can curate them. And there's two platforms there that I think are very useful for building curated courses. Perusal.com uh, is a really good one uh, with um, peer grading of comments and discussions. And Mindstone.com is a simpler one. It's quite new where you can curate videos and allow people to share notes and questions on the videos. Uh, remember, YouTube will generate a, a transcription, which can be very useful, but it really needs to be edited. It's not too much trouble. And it will also do the translation for you. Again, that probably should be ed edited as well. So one last uh, plug for Donald's uh, books. I, there's a code from a conference I was at recently, the conference I heard about. And if you go to that, I think that code still works. Thank you very much.